I wanted to do this for a really long time. I'm Claire and I am just going to be sharing my portfolio that was accepted into Um, the only school I didn't get into was Cooper Union, and I am going to be showing that portfolio. Um, they require a separate number of assignments. I'm going to be showing that, um, even though I did not get in there. I think it's also helpful to know what a school isn't looking for. I did decide to go to Pratt. So that said, I'm just going to get into my portfolio and talk a little bit about each piece. Okay, so the first piece, um, it's probably going to take me like five hours to figure this out but I'm gonna put it like right here so you get like a good version of it instead of me like picking it up and showing it to you which is also helpful for scale but I don't know where all these pieces are anymore but the first piece especially this one um, it is a big plywood sculpture and I did this at the California College of the Arts pre-college program and you like paint your face and like a design on one side of the board using color and then black and white and then we fit it together and I thought this was a good piece because it showed like woodworking abilities and it kind of showed that I also have like like doing sculpture I'm interested in sculpture um and this one paired both painting and sculpture together in a way that added to both those interests and also I think something that's really important when photographing your sculpture and stuff for your portfolio is having a nice clean background having I use like a linen sheet and I like taped one side to the wall and I taped the other side to the the ground so that there's like a clean background with no seams in the where the this meets this <laughs> So one thing about the sculpture too is it's kinetic in a way that it can be taken apart and rearranged in different format and then it, there's also a bunch of different facial expressions and yeah, I don't know, that's this one. The next one I actually made a little earlier in high school. Um, generally, I think they kind of want you to submit works that have been done in the past two years but I think if you sprinkle in a couple that were maybe in your freshman year of high school or something, um, that's okay but this one is 18 inches by 25 inches if you count like the one piece and then it was a really important piece to me at the time because um, it was my friend group at the time and it kind of showed the I use color theory and lighting and re repeating colors and lights to show like the connections within the friend group and stuff um, and then I wrote a lot about that in the the paragraph that you're supposed to write in slide room um, for some of your pieces, you're not going to write like a long ass paragraph talking about like, oh, this is all the meaning behind it. Um, but for others, it makes sense to, um, to kind of describe like your thought process behind the works. And I know some schools, uh, especially RISD, they want to see your planning for some of the pieces. So then you would submit like a piece with like your sketches and everything also like on the same clip or it was when I... Um, submitted mine and if I find any of those old like dual like sketch and final things I'll put them in here too and then the next is a diptych and it is a self-portrait and a portrait of my um, best friend and they're both acrylic on wood um, so I just call them acrylic portraits on wood and that way they, I can pair them together and I could submit both um, this is an easy way to add more to your portfolio of pieces that you really, really like, but you don't feel like you have enough space for all of them, or you don't want to waste space on one wood piece and another wood piece when you want to show more variation in what you can do. So you can put the two wood pieces together if they make sense. In this case, I think it made sense. The colors were complementary to each other and everything and it, they kind of work together. The self-portrait is done with a mirror and the other one's from a photo but generally you want to do more stuff that is from mirrors or from life or life studies and they say they can tell if you've done it from a photo or from life. I'm not sure they can but <laughs> 
<laughs> might as well go on the safe side. Plus drawing from life and painting from life is just going to help you a lot in the long run in figuring out how to create a 3D form. And then the next piece is a wide one. So I'm going to move. I don't know if I need space, but it might take up a little more space. Um, it's called Lemons and Bones. And this I actually did for an English class. I had the best English teacher ever in junior year of high school. And so this piece is, it was a poetry project. So I'm just going to read what I said for this one um, because it was kind of complex and I don't really remember all of it. Um, so I'm just going to, yeah. Um, so this is a triptych piece featuring two outer panels with poems. One poem describes the importance of memories in shaping my life through the motifs of lemons and lemonade. Um, because I thought that was like a nostalgia thing. And it has like a drawing of me as a little kid. Um, and then the outer panel describes the history. The other outer panel describes the history of our bones, focusing on the cyclical nature of matter. Um, the central panel combines these two ideas to create a self-portrait, um, indicating that I am the culmination of the memories of the earth, material, and my personal experiences, childhood. I don't know, I really liked it, and it also really shows like an interdisciplinary thing. Anyways, the next one is figure studies. This one is a couple of figure studies I did in watercolor in California, and these ones are 5 and 10 minute sketches. Um, the only 10 minute sketch is the orange one on the bottom. And then, yeah, and I painted them in a sketchbook, but only like this big. It was a way to do a more interesting type of figure drawing because you have to submit figure drawings. Everyone submitted figure drawings for the most part. Um, and just finding a way to make them a little bit more interesting to you. Um, a lot of people find it tedious. I love figure drawing, but a lot of people don't. <laughs> so finding ways to make these things interesting to you is a good way to implement them into your um, portfolio, whether it be like adding pops of color or something that you're drawn to to make it more interesting can help you do that, I guess. Um, and then this is the next set of figure drawings that I uploaded. Yeah, and it's just focusing on composition, shading, um, and then the next one I did at a RISD class that is technically not affiliated with RISD, but I, it's on their campus. Um, and so this is like a little scene in RISD. Um, it's like this area above the dining hall where they have like a couple classrooms and like a weird kitchenette thing. Um, and it was looking through the kitchenette into a separate classroom where someone was working and there was like a big projector with like a Van Gogh painting on it. It's acrylic on the canvas board and it shows the view of one room into another and it contrasts rectangular shapes with more organic ones and it creates a sense of depth and continuity through a limited color palette. Um, I did not like this painting. I didn't like it. Um, but I brought it to National Portfolio Day for reviewers. They really loved it um, at some of the schools that I was interested in. So I'm like, well, I guess I should put it in there. Um, I, so I don't really understand why this one was very successful. I guess it's interesting in that it is a interior space still life. Um, which is a lot different from anything else in my portfolio and maybe it shows a little bit of My dogs are fighting downstairs um, And then this one I made on Plywood board is a painting and I cut it so that it's a house and It uses a classic house shape as display displayed in the background houses and then they're on this little hill of like these background like cartoonish houses and then these more 3D houses like going through her body and like arcing around her um, and then the shape of the house even in like the canvas um, and at the time I was trying to depict a sense of breaking away and 
becoming more three-dimensional out of a sense of suburbia. But, like the idea of that like retro like every single house is exactly the same in cookie cutter and everyone's living the same exact life. Um, and yeah, that's like a big fear of mine to fall into that kind of pit. It It is like a very interesting composition. It's a made up composition. It's showing like starting to move towards using my art to depict like a message or something. Um, so I think it is successful in that sense. Um, and then the next piece is a marker and acrylic diptych um, of the same picture. And it's with my grandma with like a little sparkler. Um, and it's like two styles of my grandmother and it's contrasting a sort of pop art style and a more realistic style. The marker one focuses on simplification of colors and forms and the acrylic version focuses on warm and cooler color palettes. Um, and I just thought this was like a really interesting um, kind of portrayal of the two pieces together. Um, and then the next one is a sketchbook piece and it's called Contour Lines. And it's in gouache and pen. There's probably some acrylic in there too. It incorporates two depictions of the same scene with a contour line overlay on both, depicting the figure, which is my best friend's connection or lack of connection to her surroundings. I mean, it's a sketchbook piece, so it's just fun and uh, interesting, not entirely developed, but just fun. Um, I think they do like to see a couple sketchbook pieces. Um, maybe not just like this, you could probably do sketches and things and they would love that. Um, I don't know why, but I didn't do a lot of sketch, put a lot of sketches in here. Um, but yeah, that's generally something that a lot of people recommend doing. Um, and then this piece was a observational still life incorporating slight abstractions of color and rich saturation. That's my description of it. Um, and some of the descriptions that you put as a slide room, they can literally be just that short. So this one is chalk pastel and it's 17 by 14 inches. So it's kind of big, I guess. Um, and I was really working on having all these colors in the, the white fabric. So it's not just white, it's not just like gray and white. And in your still life, what they sometimes like is, <laughs> um, color bouncing from one object to another and it really ties the composition together. So you see like from the lemons, there's like um, yellow bouncing from the lemon onto the cloth. And then for the the pink sand lizard, there's pink bouncing from the under the top side of the lizard that's facing the lemon onto the lemon. It's creating this like pretty orangish pinkish thing. So the lemon isn't just a yellow color. It's like taking in all these different colors from its surroundings. There's purple in the shadows. Um, and I think that's something that's successful about this piece. And then, so the next one is something I labeled self portrait, like, cause it's a pot and it's a portrait. And I thought it was funny. Um, <laughs> and it's 10 inches by 12 inches and it's in watercolor. And it's ob an observational study of the teapot on the stove and my reflection of it. And it is from life. And yeah, I. I didn't have any watercolor pieces or many watercolor pieces in here and it was something I gravitated towards so and I do like this one I think the colors might be not as interesting um, but the composition is kind of cool and it has like an MC Etcher feel and then this one is a wax sculpture it's called the woman in the rain and it's 11 inches tall with five a five inch by five inch base and it's wax wire and wood and and it has these little like water droplet imprints all over the wax on the butt near her feet. And I did that using like a little blowtorch thing. Um, yeah, <laughs> this is my only wax sculpture, one of my only wax sculptures that I've ever done. And it just shows a little bit more versatility in the... Um, and so if you try something to add to your portfolio and it's not exactly how you wanted it to turn out, that's okay um, because it shows that you're taking risks and you're trying something new 
Um, and so that can be uh, an asset as well. Um, and then this piece I did like right before I submitted my portfolios. And it is a 23 inch by 18 inch um, piece. It's called Oil and Bloom. And it is printmaking and collage, and it has um, an environmental message. Um, I use multiple layers of paper, and then I also use lino cut prints. And then the black in the background is ink, and then there's some tissue paper collage. So it, it comments on the destructive nature of oil spills and other environmental issues. The last piece that I submitted to Everywhere was this piece called Evolve. experimented with stop motion and claymation. This was my first time doing any of this. Um, when I was really little and I did DS, I would be obsessed with, I don't know what it was called, it was like flipgrams or something. And you would like draw this little frog and then you'd like flip the page on the DS and then you draw like another frog. Ever since then, I hadn't done anything like that. Anything involving animation, nothing. Yeah, so this was only 30 seconds long, but it was like, hey, I'm interested in other stuff and this is cool to me. So in this video, the fish morphs or evolves into a person, creating a humorous depiction of evolution. So this I also use for one of my pieces in the RISD um, special assignment or whatever. And then the other piece I use... It's like literally a painting of my naked body and I'm not <laughs> comfortable putting it up here. Um, because it really looks like how I looked at that time and I'm not proud of how I looked at that time but yes yeah, so I'm not gonna put that up here um, but the thing that I chose was error um, and for that one I had like a palette knife kind of effect on it that made it look like computer screen glitching in a sort of way and there was also behind me in the background a lot of like bottles of like shampoo and like eye cream and wrinkle cream and stuff and it was supposed to be like oh the errors in our bodies and whatever and how people try to um, cover up these errors and things like that um, and then this one was another take on natural errors so like the process of evolution is a whole process of errors and things for my Cooper Union application this is the only school I got rejected from and it's a tiny, tiny school, and I went and visited it, and it's in the heart of Manhattan, kind of, and the location is amazing. So for this one, yeah, I just, they have a really confusing process where you submit your application with a common app and like essays and things, and then a little while later, they'll send you an email or a letter or something, I don't remember. Um, but it'll tell you like, okay, these are your like nine assignments that you have to do within one month and then you have to submit it to Cooper Union. That is my portfolio. I am happy where I am. <laughs> I am at Pratt right now. I live close to RISD, so I probably visited there about four times, and every time I hated it. <laughs> I don't like Providence or anything. I know it's some people's cup of tea, but it just it wasn't mine. I wanted to be in New York. I wanted to maybe not pay that much for college as RISD has. They don't offer merit scholarships, or at least they didn't when I was um, applying. Um, yeah, and 
it, while I really do like the stuff that Student Service Dear are producing, there's quite a few faculty members that also work at Pratt or other schools. 